What's up Tackle to the People fam? Today is a very special day because I'm putting out a full length video which I rarely do. As you can probably guess from the intro, we are striper fishing. It is late October here in Massachusetts and this is the tail end of the fall run and I'm at the one and only Cape Cod Canal. Specifically, I'm gonna be jigging at the Cape Cod Canal. Now, OG subscribers know I don't do a lot of talking when I'm fishing alone. Um, that's just the way that I am, that's just the way that I fish, but I will be adding narration about what I'm doing in these videos. The Cape Cod Canal is a super unforgiving fishing landscape. There's a lot of stuff you need to know in order to be successful and more importantly consistent. I've had some brutal brutal 10 plus hour days of fishing at the canal with nothing to show for it. Um, so in this video I'm going to be sharing with you guys everything I've learned thus far to be able to get to a point where I feel like I can be pretty consistent. So drop a sub if you haven't already hit that like for the algorithm and let's get into it. So if you're new to jigging at the canal or jigging in general, the name of the game is bottom fishing. Unless you're fishing a topwater blitz, most of the time you're going to be getting striper off the bottom. And that means you got to let your jig sink all the way down. So I typically cast as far as I can and then I just leave my bail open until I feel that thump of the jig hitting bottom. Obviously it's super windy today, so I'm keeping an eye on where my line is blowing. Once you're at bottom, there's a number of ways you can retrieve your lure. Here I'm just doing a steady retrieve with an occasional pop. Nothing on that last float, so I'm bringing my jig in. One thing you gotta keep an eye out for, which I learned the hard way so many times, is don't bounce your jig off the rocks. Sometimes you'll accidentally nick your line if you bounce it off the rocks, so the next cast, your line will break right at that point and you'll lose your lure. Here I'm just waiting for my jig to hit bottom. First couple casts, I counted about 15 seconds before my lure hit bottom, so I'm just counting here in my head. Generally, it's a useful thing to do, especially when it's really windy out and you can't feel bottom as easily because of your line blown around. So here we have our first fish on. As you saw, he missed the first time. Best practice actually is to horse the fish in as quickly as you can. So my, my drag's pretty locked. The reason for that is because you don't want the fish to catch current. Once it catches current, it'll have a lot more force to be able to run. And also, he's more likely to tangle other people's lines who are fishing further downstream from you. Lastly, it's also better for the fish. Short fight means less energy expended fighting you, meaning he's more likely to get revived and swim off safely to live another day. So here I'm actually going down to get the fish. Yes, I could lift them above the rocks and handle them that way, but this is always much, much safer for the fish. If you drag the fish up the rocks, you're gonna scrape his body, he's gonna hit his head on the rocks. Just again, more stuff that will decrease his chance of survival. So we're doing catch and release. This is definitely a schoolie. So I'm going down to handle him, unhook him, and release him. Nice healthy schoolie, altogether probably 60 seconds out of the water. I got what I got in terms of the footage and I'm putting him right back. So there's fish number two. The slow retrieve and occasional pop technique with the jig wasn't working as well, so now I'm just letting the lure kind of float downstream without reeling and just giving it the occasional pop. That seems to be the thing that's generating the most hits for me today. So 
if you've never fished a jetty or rock pilings before, it can get ridiculously slippery. If you just show up in sneakers with no treads, then there's a good chance you're going to wipe out. So I'm using non-studded corkers here, just the regular rubber sole, and it seems to do the trick for me. Nothing ruins a day of fishing like a trip to the ER. All right, here I'm switching out the bucktail for a Savage Gear sand eel. I just want to see if I can get some bigger fish here. The bucktail works, no question, but I'm going to see if this bigger paddle tail is going to filter out maybe some of the smalls we can get on some better fish. And if you are wondering, I'm running 50 pound mono leader right now. The knot I'm tying is a uni knot with seven loops. I tie a uni just because it's not as strong as some of the other knots. So if I get caught up on the bottom, I can break off and it almost always breaks off at the lure and not the leader knot. Paddle tail actually creates a lot more drag in the water column, so it actually hits bottom a lot slower. It's part of the reason why I like bucktails more, but as you're gonna see in a little bit, it doesn't really make a difference this morning. So I know some people are probably going to see that and be like, oh, you brought them up some rocks, but they're kind of covered in seaweed. It basically acts as a cushion. Fish is totally safe. So that was a better one. Again, really trying to limit the time out of the water. So I'm just holding him up so I can get the footage and just putting him right back.
That's fish number four, I think. They're really stacked up off to the right over there. All right, at this point I'm thinking like, what won't these guys hit? Because right now the bite's super hot. So I'm gonna take off this sand eel and I'm actually gonna throw on a, uh, a jig that I found. Uh, it looks like a knockoff sand eel, mackerel color. Doesn't look like name brand. And it's actually on the lighter side. I usually use the three ounce sand eels. I think they're like three and a half ounces or something. This one feels like it's about two ounces or so. Um, so what you'll see is I'll, I'll have trouble actually getting down to the bottom where all the fish are hitting. But the biggest thing obviously is half of the soft plastic is missing. I'm really gonna see if a bad presentation will result in a fish anyway. So this is when I realized that this jig's giving me problems. It's way too light, I'm floating down current way too quickly, and I'm not fishing close enough to the bottom. So this next cast I'm catching farther to the left and really just letting line fly out. So the fish are definitely there, that was like four hits that time, but none of them committed to it. Could be the presentation, could just be completely unrelated, but this next cast we're gonna get one. Right on the drop that time, didn't even need to jig it. Just as it was approaching bottom, one slams it. Nice, you got a slot? Nice. Yeah, you gotta work your way through the tiny ones. Cool. 
Yeah, still fun. So talk to that guy a little bit. Obviously, he's stoked. He caught a slot. Again, it was just one of those days where if you weren't catching, you were doing something wrong. Some days you can do the right thing and you won't catch the fish, but a day like this, very difficult to not catch them unless you're doing something blatantly wrong. So I know earlier I mentioned you should go down and handle your fish, but this striper was so small I was confident I could rod flip him without him hitting the rocks. And notice how all the handling happens in the air. The fish doesn't touch the rocks. But that was fun. Now we know that they'd hit even a broken soft plastic. So I'm going to switch to a proper lure now, hopefully get some size and get a slot just like that last guy that walked by. I'm going to be switching gears to a canal bait and tackle peanut bunker jig, three ounces. So this clearly is a better fish. You heard that dragon gauge, you saw me set the hook and that thing just did not move. Um, this is definitely the best fish of the day. And he spits the hook. That was definitely a tragedy. By far the best fish of the day. It looked to me like it was at least a slot. That's one of the downsides of fishing the canal where you have to horse the fish in because they still have a lot of energy in them. But sometimes it just be like that because if you let the fish run, if you take your time with it, he's gonna swim downstream. You're gonna have a much harder time bringing him in. And you're gonna cross everybody else's line downstream from you. So I'm kind of peeved. I'm gonna switch back to the bucktail because I wanna see if there are any more bigger ones off of the bottom. So we're switching back to old three ounce bucktail, no trailer. Here we go. I know instantly from how this fish is fighting that it's not a striper. You can probably guess exactly what it is.
bluefish? Yeah, we got a bluefish. That there's a bluefish. Oh, that's a nice bluefish. I actually was planning on releasing this guy, but he jacked up his mouth real bad around the jig. So I figured why not just keep him. So as many of you guys pointed out what you should do for bluefish as well as any other fish for that matter. If you plan on keeping it, bleed it right after you catch it. It's one of the best ways you can increase its fridge life as well as have a less pungent fishy flavor in your meat. So there's our nice keeper blue. You guys already know if you watch my videos what I'm going to turn him into. A bluefish this big actually makes a lot of serving, so I end up giving a lot away to my friends. But I'm just going to set him aside on the rocks and I'm going to try to catch one more hopefully keeper striper before heading out this morning. Nothing on that pass, but still getting hit, which is good news. It's funny because the tide's actually starting to flip, so the fishing's getting a little bit slower. Those guys down there are screaming in what I think is Brazilian Portuguese because they're not able to hook up, but there's still definitely fish here. Feels like another bluefish. Not the striper. Well, that's all she wrote. My arm's sore, tide's about to flip, so it's anticipated to get slower anyway. I'm taking a little vertical video for my short form content, but if you're still watching, thanks for making it to the end, and I'll see you guys in the next one.